will be ready because we're going to be planning for August. So if you've seen some of my videos, you know that I like a more scrapbooking style of bullet journaling, and that's exactly what I'm going to go for in this video as well, where I will show you how I put together all of my August spreads, all 19 of them. Yes, 19. My first spread of the month is pretty much always a title page, and the only two elements that I always include in my title pages are a little calendar for the month and the name of the month. So you will see those two things here as well. I printed my calendar in advance, and this one has a lemon theme. And I decided to go for lemons because they just feel very summery to me. And since August is the last month of summer, I definitely wanted to go for a more summer-themed spread. I also wanted to use these white sparkly letters for the name of the month, just because I've already had them for a little while and I haven't used them yet, so why not? And of course, because the letters are white, I needed to put them on some sort of colored background to make them stand out. And I chose this fun polka dot green version, because I thought it kind of went well with the lemon theme. Lemons are yellow, although my lemons are black and white, just because I don't have a colored printer. But still, generally they are yellow, and green and yellow go well together. And that's how I found myself with a green-themed title page. And the rest of the elements I chose, just keeping that in mind. So I added a green themed photo, a couple of stickers, and for major sparkle and drama, a very very sparkly green piece of paper. As usual, I added a little looking forward to section on the first page of the month, and this has actually really helped me to look forward to some of the positive things that I know are going to be happening this month. And it's something that I highly recommend, especially if you tend to focus more on the negative things like I do. This might actually help you to turn that around a little bit, so try it out. And of course, for someone who's very glitter crazy like I am, there's never enough glitter on a spread, so I decided to add a little bit of glittery iridescent paint to the lemons to make them shine even more. So I usually start my spreads by just grabbing the first piece of stationery that speaks to me and building the spread around that. In this case, I decided to grab this piece of scrapbooking paper with little seahorses on it, just because it felt very summery to me, and as I mentioned, I want to get those summer spreads going. <laughs> In this case, that piece of paper just happened to be blue, so this spread is going to have a blue theme. And it starts with a blue photograph, which coincidentally is also ocean-themed, which goes nicely with my seahorse ocean-themed paper. And that's pretty much where I lose the ocean theme, but I'm still sticking with the blue. And I'm pretty much adding blue butterflies and a bunch of blue washi tape. Well, a little bit of purple and blue washi tape as well, with butterflies too. Now, at some point while I was setting up this spread, I realized that I would actually like more space for this particular spread, just because I knew that it would be my best of the month spread, and just like my looking forward to spread, I like to write a bit more, because I really feel that it helps me stay positive. So I ruthlessly tore down my little piece of blue paper and made it substantially smaller, so that I would have more space to write. reach spread number three. Now this one I started with a bit of a plan, or as much of a plan as I usually have for my spreads, in the sense that this time I knew what paper I was going to use and I knew what washi tape I was going to use, just because they match so perfectly. Now unfortunately once I've actually set that up, I had no idea what to do next. So I do what I always do in these situations, I just grab something random. And luckily, in this case, the first thing I grabbed actually had the thing that I thought would work well with my spread, and that was a few medieval elements. 
I tore them up for that raw edge look and quickly glued them down before I decided to spend another half an hour trying to find something else and changed my mind about them. Too late now, right? Things still felt a little empty to me though, so I decided to add a couple of black leafy stickers to match the black and white medieval images, and finish things off with a title in a matching black and burgundy color scheme. Now it was time for the habit tracker. Now I'm going to be honest and tell you right away that this is my least favorite spread from this entire set, and that's saying something because there are quite a few spreads here. In fact, I even thought about taking it out, but I thought I'd leave it in and show it to you anyways, just to show you that, well, not everything turns out the way you want it to, and it certainly doesn't for me. My original vision for the spread was that I would use this tiger image and add just a little bit of silver around the edges to make the spread a little bit more sparkly and add that little bit of extra drama to it, because I thought that the tiger picture was pretty enough on its own, but needed just a little bit of extra spice. Unfortunately, once I added the silver paint, yes, it did sparkle, but it also looked like a complete and total mess. I actually had to come back to this spread the next day to try to salvage it a little bit, and I tried to do that by adding a little bit of my favorite black and gold washi tape, a few black stars, and a few gold stickers. I wouldn't say that it actually fixed the spread, but I think it made it a little bit better, but it was the best I could do, and it wasn't really hurting my eyes to look at it anymore, so I didn't want to redo the whole spread. Now this is another tracker spread, and if you've seen my previous videos, you'll know that this is actually a new thing for me to use two spreads for my trackers. But the previous way that I was doing it, using only one spread and a graph at that, was just getting too messy. Plus, some things just shouldn't be tracked on a graph, they don't really make sense like that, so I decided to try out two spreads. And this one is one where I would just put a check mark onto each box corresponding to each day of the month for, well, whenever I actually completed this particular habit, or felt whatever it is that I'm tracking, because I have a few emotional states, physical states, and a whole bunch of habits, so it's sort of a general tracker rather than a habit tracker. Now, as I was writing down whatever it is that I'm tracking, I realized that I actually messed up, because I was following the lines of my journal rather than the grids of my tracker. It's pretty much why you see me covering it a lot with a piece of scrapbooking paper and starting over. By the way, if you do have some interesting scrapbooking paper lying around and have to cover up a mistake, this is a great way to do it and no one will even know. Unless, of course, you post your video on YouTube showing your mistake to the entire world. Since my little mistake covering patch is green, I decided to just go for a green spread. Clearly fate was telling me something. Or maybe it was just sleep depression. Who knows? Whatever the case may be, I added the first green element I found, which was this green forest photo, and then I matched that with some green forest themed stickers and some green forest themed washi tape. The last thing I added was this white polar bear sticker, just because there was an empty space there in the spread, and if you've seen the name of my channel, then you know I like polar bears, so it's always a win. spread was also one I started by just randomly pulling a piece of scrapbooking paper from my little pile beside me on the table. And I decided to go with this combination of pink and blue strips. I'm not really sure how to call this, quite frankly, but I think the two designs were meant to go separately, but I really like them together, so I went with a pink and blue theme for this particular spread following this design. This time my headings were typed and cut out. Now, sometimes I write my headings, but sometimes I prefer to have them typed up, just because, well, I don't have the most calligraphy-like handwriting out there, and that's despite the fact that I do practice quite a bit, I just haven't gotten there. 
believe me, what you see is a vast improvement over where I started. Actually, the TA for one of my classes was initially asking me why I type up every single assignment when he didn't actually require them to be typed. Now, this was for a class which actually had a lot of formulas for each assignment, and mathematical formulas take quite a while to type up. But after he saw my first test, which obviously I couldn't type up, he decided that he preferred it that way. In any case, back to the spread. To make things a little bit more interesting, I added some pink tissue paper on top of the black and white headings, and a little bit of blue paper to match the pink and blue color scheme. And of course, I added a couple of black butterfly stickers just to make things a little bit more interesting, and because I felt that something was missing before. another spread for which I had a plan. And by having a plan, I mean I wanted to add these two pieces of scrapbooking paper that I thought went really well together. Following that, I had to improvise, which was the hard part. To make things more interesting and fill in some of the gaps in the spread, I decided to add two black and white flower stickers and a few pieces of craft paper. It's actually been a while since I used some craft paper in my spreads, and I missed it, so I thought it was a good place to use it since it sort of matched the brownish tones in the brick. Now I think it actually would have been fine if I stopped here, but you know me, I like it when things sparkle and shine, so I decided to add some gold paint to really make that happen. Now, the first thing I did was splatter some paint over my spread, but what I didn't realize, because I haven't used paint in quite a while, is just how far the paint would splatter all over my table. Now, this is acrylic paint, so once it dries, it's really, really hard to get off. So, I learned from my mistake and just placed paper towels around my spread for the rest of the splattering. I also added a little bit of gold all around my spread for some extra sparkle. This next spread is actually one of my favorites from the setup, despite how simple it is and how quickly it came together. I started with this dark green piece of scrapbooking paper with a sort of vintage fantasy themed design on it. And I went with the theme by adding some more black elements in the form of a black piece of paper and a black flower. And of course, I had to add a little bit of gold for some extra sparkle, but not too much because I still wanted the theme to be a little bit more understated and simple. Or, you know, as simple as my themes tend to get. The final touch was adding headings in a matching black and green color. For the spread, I realized that I had lemons on my first page, but absolutely zero fruit since then. So I decided to remedy this terrible oversight by adding some pineapples. Now, since those pineapples are blue, you know what that means, it's going to be a mostly blue theme. And I started that with a blue photo, which just happened to have some butterflies on it. And since it did have butterflies on it, and I knew that I had some butterfly stickers, well, of course I had to use those. I mean, can't have the butterflies getting lonely. The rest of the spread pretty much just involves me finding a whole bunch of other blue things to add to make the spread more interesting. Now, once I've added my blue headings, I realized that something was missing. And this is actually where I'm doing something a little bit different and something that I don't do much because I don't really have the patience for it, but I decided to add a little bit of doodling. And I doodled a few black leaves just around the heading to make it a little bit more fun. This next spread is actually another spread that I'm just not a big fan of, but you win some, you lose some. And it's not bad, definitely better than my tracker spread, I'm just not a big fan of how it turned out. 
Here I started out with a black and white flower image and decided to add a dark, starry scrapbooking paper for a little bit of contrast. I then followed the starry theme by adding a bunch of stars all around my headings and made things a little bit more interesting by adding a few stickers in a matching color scheme. I think my problem with this theme is that it's just too dark and simple, but I just didn't have anything to add, so I left it as is, and again, it's not bad, I just feel like it needed something more, but I just don't know what that something could be. By the way, in case you're wondering, we're more than halfway through the setup and there are only 9 spreads left, so the finish line is in sight! Yay! And to commemorate this momentous occasion, we have something little different, which is a happy little multicolored spread. For this one, I went with a whole bunch of colorful butterflies that match the colors in my little colorful flower image. And once I had all of that down, it was pretty much just a matter of adding a little bit of floral washi and a little bit of gold washi just to make the spread a little bit more interesting and to fill in some of the empty spaces. I even decided to embrace the rainbow theme with my headings, although you can see that I messed up and did two of them in blue. But no biggie, I just went over it in green later and presto, rainbow theme restored. All is right with the world. You know, if the world was for some strange reason confined to my journal. This next spread is actually another one that I'm not a very big fan of, and coincidentally it's actually another star-themed spread. Now I do like star themes in general, but for some reason they're just not working out for August, I have no idea why. This time I started out with a couple of star-themed pictures and added a positive little quote to keep me positive throughout the month. I added a couple of moon stickers to go with the theme, and of course, can't have a starry themed spread without my favorite black and gold starry washi tape, or really many other spreads as well, because I use it quite a bit, as you've probably noticed. In any case, it actually fit the theme really well here. And of course, it wouldn't be a starry themed spread without adding yet more stars, more, more, more. And I did that by doodling some stars around my headings. I think I may have been getting tired of all the dark colored spreads, because I decided to go for another brightly colored one. Now, this is another really simple spread that didn't really take me long at all, but it's actually one of my favorites. I'm sensing a theme here. I think other than my title page, all my favorite spreads are actually the ones that took me the least amount of time. I guess they were just happy accidents. This spread I again started with the bright colored scrapbooking paper and just added a few stickers to make things more interesting. Headings are actually made in gold just because I thought they matched the rest of the colors in the spread. And my final touch for this spread was a little bit of doodling in the form of some green leaves, and I really like how they came together with the rest of the spread, because I think that they're simple enough not to detract from the spread, but still make it a little bit more interesting in a sort of understated way. This next spread is actually another one that I sort of planned out in advance, at least to some extent. I was going through my stickers and I realized that some of the butterflies looked remarkably like they had a cheetah print going on, and the idea for the spread was born. So you can see that I planned ahead by printing some cheetahs on an orange piece of paper, and I'm going to match that to my cheetah print butterflies. Little quote was actually something else that I came across in my stash that seemed to fit the theme really well, so I used that too. And after that, it was pretty much just a matter of placing things and adding a little bit of black and gold washi tape to make things a little bit more interesting and fill in some of the gaps. 
For the headings, I ended up going for a bronze color to match the butterflies. And surprisingly, it's actually a color that I don't use very often, so it was fun to use it here. This is another colorful spread based around quote. And since the quote has the word flowers in it, and is sort of based around flowers, I knew that I definitely wanted to add some flowers into my spread. I finally settled on this pink flower photo because it matched the colors in the rest of the spread, and then I pretty much just added a bunch of pink flowery washi tape and a little bit of gold washi tape just to add a little bit of extra sparkle. Also, here I am using those printed out headings again, and just like before, I'm adding a little bit of tissue paper on top, just because I like that scrapbooky feel, and because it helps to add a little bit more color to the black and white headings. By the way, in case you're wondering, there are only 4 spreads left, but this has actually been quite a long video, so if you're still with me, thank you and I hope you're enjoying it so far. Back to the spread. Here I'm using a piece of scrapbooking paper with the words perfectly imperfect written on it, and I think that this would be a good reminder for me because Amongst my many problems, I'm actually a perfectionist, so I always have to pull myself back from working on something for too long and trying to make things perfect, because there's no such thing as perfect, and I never ever manage to satisfy my own expectations for myself. So hopefully this paper will serve as a small reminder for me to, well, stop that, because I do tend to forget. And since the paper is blue, I decided to match that with a whole bunch of other blue elements, except for the little black and white umbrella, which is there just because I thought that it was really fun and cute, and it's black and white, so it goes with everything, right? I have to say, it took me a little while to find enough blue things to add to make the spread more interesting, just because I don't seem to have that much blue stationery. It's something I should probably remedy because I do find myself creating blue spreads every once in a while, and always run into this problem. So this is another spread that came together remarkably quickly, and yet is another one of my favorites. My only plan for it was to use this one paper and the quote, and the rest of the elements just happened to fit right away. Seriously, I just grabbed the first thing I saw that seemed to match the color scheme, and it all worked. This practically never happens, but it happened here, so I'm really, really happy it did. To match that particular color scheme, I added a floral photo in matching colors, a little bit of craft paper, a little bit of gold washi, and a few gold stickers for a little bit of extra sparkle. Of course, the headings also had to be gold, because there clearly just wasn't enough gold in the spread. Really though, the headings just matched the color scheme, so they were gold. particular spread, I went for a few more pieces that I printed on the orange construction paper I used for my cheetah spread. To be honest, I went with the orange sun just because I thought that it fit a lot better for August than it would for future months, and this was almost my last spread, so I figured it was now or never. But I actually ended up really liking how this spread came out. Again, it's a pretty simple spread, mostly because I was getting really, really tired at this point. But still, I think that it's fairly interesting and it's very, very bold, which I like. To add some more contrast to the orange sun, I decided to put some black paper underneath it. And of course, I then used my favorite black and gold washi tape. And to match the starry theme on that, and because I really like the idea of adding some stars around the sun, I added some gold stars around the sun on the black paper. I thought that they stood out actually really nicely, and I really liked the result. 
and of course my headings were also black and gold to match. And do you know what this spread is? It's the very last spread for my August setup. We made it. Almost. For this spread, I cut out a bunch of black and white seashells and placed them on a fish scale background. I then knew that I wanted to write the headings on washi tape, just because I haven't done that very much this month and I really like how it looks. Also, it makes the headings look better and it's sort of the lazy way of making them look better. What can I say? It was my last spread of the month and I was pretty tired. Now, I honestly thought that I should just leave the spread the way it is, but I wanted to add just a little extra touch to make it just a little bit more interesting. And I did that by adding a little bit of that iridescent paint I added in an earlier spread to all of the seashells, just to make them a little bit sparkly when the light hits them just right. And that's pretty much it for this video. I really hope that you liked it, and if you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Pretty please, I worked really hard on it. And if you want to see more videos like it, please do hit that subscribe button down below. Generally though, I'll see you in my next video. I hope you have a great August. Thank you so much for watching. See you always. Bye!